I welcome you back to Analytics Simplified. In this video, I will be taking up another problem on Master's Serum. So in case you haven't watched previous videos, the link should appear in the i button. You can go there and check them. So this is our second problem on Master's Serum. And again, we are, sub we are given a recurrence relation that is of the form 2 times Tn by 2 plus n multiplied by log n. Okay. So again, we will be following the same steps that we have been doing so far. So in the first step what I will be trying to do is I will be trying to convert this into the standard form and in order to convert this into a standard form I need a theta notation so what I can do is I can call this function as fn and I can write fn to be equal to theta of fn by making use of this reflexive property okay so once I do this I can have my modified recurrence equation of the form 2 times of t n by 2 plus theta of n log n okay and then what I will be doing is in this next step, I will be comparing this recurrence equation with the standard form. The idea is to get the values for these coefficients a, b, k and p. Okay, so once I compare this recurrence equation with the standard form, I can just compare to get the values for the different coefficients. For example, in this case, the value of a will be equal to 2, the value of b will be equal to 2. The value of k n raised to the power 1 is n raised to the power k, right? So value of k will be equal to 1 and log n basically means log n raised to the power 1 which means the value of p is equal to 1. So with this step 2 is completed and we are now having all the values for these coefficients a, b, k and p. In the next step what we will be doing is we will be trying to find out if the coefficients conform to the constraint. So what is the first constraint? The first constraint is that the value of a should be greater than or equal to 1. In our case, it is equal to 2 which means constraint 1 is satisfied. In the second constraint, b should be greater than 1. In our case, it is equal to 2. b is equal to 2. That means this constraint is also satisfied. In the third constraint, the value of k should be greater than or equal to 0. In our case, it is equal to 1 which means third constraint is also satisfied. And lastly, p should be a real number. p is 1 which is a real number. So, it means these coefficients satisfy all these constraints and now it is possible for us to get the time complexity for this recurrence equation by using master's theorem okay so what we will be doing next is we will be finding out the values of a and b raised to the power k and then we will be comparing so by direct comparison we have already found out that the value of a is equal to 2 and value of b raised to the power k is equal to 2 raised to the power 1 because b was equal to 2 and k was equal to 1 so b raised to the power k is equal to 2 raised to the power 1 which is equal to 2. Now upon comparison we find out that the value of a is equal to b raised to the power k which means our problem lies in case 2. right? So when a problem lies in case 2 we have to have a check on the value for p. So in our case the value of p is equal to 1 which is greater than minus 1. Okay, so which means the time complexity for this recurrence equation can be written in the form theta of n raised to the power log a base b multiplied by log n whole square. Okay, so what I can do is I can simply put these values. So n raised to the power log the value of a is equal to 2, the value of b is equal to 2, okay, multiplied by log n raised to the power 2. So log base 2 base log 2 base 2 is equal to 1 which means the time complexity for the recurrence equation can be written of the form log n whole square. Okay. So this is our answer. I hope that you have followed all these steps. In case you have any doubts, you can go and check the discussion on master's theorem in the i button.